So remember, two of the top strategies for taking the PSAT on any section is guessing strategically and eliminating answers. So here I am with the PSAT in front of me. I've got the test, I've got my answer booklet, and I'm on the math section. So let's say that I'm running out of time, or I just am tired, or I don't know how to do the problem. I can guess strategically if I can eliminate one or more answer choices. So let's take a look at this first problem. In January, Hazel paid $3.50 for a gallon of gas. In July, she paid $4.50 a gallon. Which of the following is the closest to the percent increase in the price of gas? Now, I always get confused with percent increased. I can do straight percents, but not these increases. It's confusing to me. But what I can do is I can look at the answer choices and try to eliminate one or two so I can guess strategically. So we've got 22%, 29%, 78%, 129%, and 350%. Well, that's a pretty big range. And there are three answer choices that are pretty close together. You've got 22%, 29%, and 78% is a lot closer to that than 129 and 350%. If I were to eliminate one or two so I could guess, I would probably get rid of 350% and probably 129%. It just doesn't make sense, and it's kind of out there. If I were to eliminate even further, I would probably eliminate 78% because 22 and 29 seem pretty close together. And if I eliminate three answer choices, I have a 50-50% chance of getting it right. So I'm just gonna go ahead and answer B. Turns out it's the right answer. Let's go on and look at the next one. After the first term in a sequence of positive integers, the ratio of each term to the term immediately preceding it is three to one. What is the ratio of the fifth term to the second term? Remember, in the math section, you can eliminate answer choices that are way out there that are misfits, and usually you can eliminate answer choices that repeat the numbers in the problem. Now, there are different things that you can eliminate in the critical reading and in the writing section. Answer choices with lots of words and lots of redundancies, ones that just don't make sense. But in the math section, those are the types of ones that you can eliminate. So let's look at our answer choices. We have three to one, five to two, nine to one, 27 to 1 and 81 to 1. Well, our question has 3 to 1 and 5 to 2. Usually in the math section, you can eliminate the answer choices that repeat numbers that are in the problem. So let's go ahead and get rid of answer choice A and answer choice B, which leaves us with 9 to 1, 27 to 1, and 81 to 1. If you guess from one of these three remaining answer choices, you have a one in three chance of getting it right, which means statistically, you'll end up ahead. So let's go ahead and answer choice D. I don't know if it's correct or not, but we know we have a pretty good shot. 